Question 81. Which of the following complications is thought to be the most common cause of appendicitis? A. A fecalith. B. Bowel kinking. C. Internal bowel occlusion. D. Abdominal bowel swelling. Question 81. Answer. A fecalith. Question 81. Explanation. A fecalith is a fecal calculus, or stone, that occludes the lumen of the appendix and is the most common cause of appendicitis. Bowel wall swelling, kinking of the appendix, and external occlusion, not internal occlusion, of the bowel by adhesions can also be causes of appendicitis. Question 82. Which of the following terms best describes the pain associated with appendicitis? A. Aching. B. Fleeting. C. Intermittent. D. Steady. Question 82. Answer. D. Steady. Question 82. Explanation. The pain begins in the epigastrium or periumbilical region, then shifts to the right lower quadrant and becomes steady. The pain may be moderate to severe. Question 83. Which of the following nursing interventions should be implemented to manage a client with appendicitis? A. Assessing for pain. B. Encouraging oral intake of clear fluids. C. Providing discharge teaching. D. Assessing for symptoms of peritonitis. Question 83 Answer. D. Assessing for symptoms of peritonitis. Question 83 Explanation. The focus of care is to assess for peritonitis, or inflammation of the peritoneal cavity. Peritonitis is most commonly caused by appendix rupture and invasion of bacteria, which could be lethal. The client with appendicitis will have pain that should be controlled with analgesia. The nurse should discourage oral intake in preparation for surgery. Discharge teaching is important, however, in the acute phase, management should focus on minimizing preoperative complications and recognizing when such may be occurring. Question 84. Which of the following definitions best describes gastritis? A. Erosion of the gastric mucosa. B. Inflammation of a diverticulum. C. Inflammation of the gastric mucosa. D. Reflux of stomach acid into the esophagus. Question 84 Answer. C. Inflammation of the gastric mucosa. Question 84 Explanation. Gastritis is an inflammation of the gastric mucosa that may be acute, often resulting from exposure to local irritants, or chronic, associated with autoimmune infections or atrophic disorders of the stomach. Erosion of the mucosa results in ulceration. Inflammation of a diverticulum is called diverticulitis. Reflux of stomach acid is known as gastroesophageal disease. Question 85. Which of the following substances is most likely to cause gastritis? A. Milk. B. Bicarbonate of soda, or baking soda. C. Enteric coated aspirin. D. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Question 85. Answer. D. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Question 85. Explanation. NSAIDs are a common cause of gastritis because they inhibit prostaglandin synthesis. Milk, once thought to help gastritis, has little effect on the stomach mucosa. Bicarbonate of soda, or baking soda, may be used to neutralize stomach acid but it should be used cautiously because it may lead to metabolic acidosis. Also with enteric coating shouldn't contribute significantly to gastritis because the coating limits the aspirin's effect on the gastric mucosa. Question 86. Which of the following definitions best describes diverticulosis? A. An inflamed outpouching of the intestine. B. A non-inflamed outpouching of the intestine. See the partial impairment of the forward flow of intestinal contents. D. An abnormal protrusion of an organ through the structure that usually holds it. Question 86 Answer. B. A non-inflamed outpouching of the intestine. Question 86 Explanation. Diverticulosis involves a non-inflamed outpouching of the intestine. Diverticulitis involves an inflamed outpouching. The partial impairment of forward flow of the intestine is an obstruction. Abnormal protrusion of an organ is a hernia. Question 87. Which of the following types of diets is implicated in the development of diverticulosis? A. Low fiber diet. B. High fiber diet. C. High protein diet. D. Low carbohydrate diet. Question 87. Answer. A 
a low fiber diet question 87 explanation low fiber diets have been implicated in the development of diverticula because these diets decrease the bulk in the stool and predispose the person to the development of constipation a high fiber diet is recommended to help prevent diverticulosis a high protein or low carbohydrate diet has no effect on the development of diverticulosis question 88 which of the following mechanisms can facilitate the development of diverticulosis into diverticulitis? A. Treating constipation with chronic laxative use, leading to dependence on laxatives. B. Chronic constipation causing an obstruction, reducing forward flow of intestinal contents. C. Herniation of the intestinal mucosa, rupturing the wall of the intestine. D. Undigested food blocking the diverticulum predisposing the area to bacterial invasion question 88 answer d undigested food blocking the diverticulum predisposing the area to bacterial invasion question 88 explanation undigested food can block the diverticulum decreasing blood supply to the area and predisposing the area to invasion of bacteria chronic laxative use is a common problem in elderly clients but it doesn't cause diverticulitis Chronic constipation can cause an obstruction, not diverticulitis. Herniation of the intestinal mucosa causes an intestinal perforation. Question 89. Which of the following symptoms indicated diverticulosis? A. No symptoms exist. B. Change in bowel habits. C. Anorexia with low-grade fever. D. Episodic, dull, or steady mite abdominal pain. Question 89. Answer. A no symptoms exist question 89 explanation diverticulosis is an asymptomatic condition the other choices are signs and symptoms of diverticulitis question 90 which of the following tests should be administered to a client suspected of having diverticulosis a abdominal ultrasound b barium enema c barium swallow d gastroscopy question 90 answer B. Barium enema Question 90 Explanation A barium enema will cause diverticulate to fill with barium and be easily seen on X-ray. An abdominal U.S. can tell more about structures, such as the gallbladder, liver, and spleen, than the intestine. A barium swallow and gastroscopy view upper GI structures, 